Hi everyone, it's Melissa from Porch Swing Creations. Today I want to share with you this bokeh technique, this really cool blurred background that you see in photography that's so popular nowadays. It's really easy. I've seen a few other videos with it done as re-inkers in the background, but I'm going to show you how to use sponges and ink to create the same effect. So there's just a couple things you're going to need. You're going to need um, at least three colors of ink any color of your choice. In this case I used Strawberry Slush, Pear Pizzazz, and Coastal Cabana. And you're also going to need Whisper White Craft Ink. So I thought I'd do something a little bit different today and not use these colors. Um, I thought that I'd use some purples. So I'm going to do Perfect Plum, um, Elegant Eggplant, and Bermuda Bay. And then I thought I'd show you the template that I made as well. So this is just using a piece of window sheet that I've cut and it's the three smallest circles from the window frame like collection. So I've just gone ahead and cut those out and now I can use this over and over and over again. So we're going to start with a piece of Whisper White cardstock and I'm going to start with Perfect Plum first. So you're just going to need a sponge and you're going to want to load up your sponge and I think I'm going to do it so that I'm not going to cover the entire background on this one. I'm only going to do about half of it. So we'll work and see how that turns out. So you're just going to go ahead and start laying that color down. And you're going to want to build it up. You're going to want to leave some white spaces so that you can blend in the other colors that we're going to use. There's really no um, technique, so to speak, on applying the color. Just kind of lay it down there. However you see, you can always go back and add and blend as you go. So I'm going to leave it at that. I've covered about half of the paper. So after the perfect plum, I'm going to use the Bermuda Bay. Again, there's really no um, technique to this other than you don't have to start with the lightest color and go to the darkest color. It's probably a good idea to start with the lightest colors and move to the darkest colors, but I wouldn't say that that is a must. So I'm going to go ahead and load up my Bermuda Bay now. And I'm just going to start slowly filling in some of these white areas. And I'm going to overlap on top of that perfect plum too. Because I want to see all those colors kind of blend together. And the great part about this is that some areas are going to now be brighter with the Bermuda Bay. And some are going to be a little bit darker and more muted. Okay. So you can see how that looks now. So now I'm going to go in with the Elegant Eggplant, load up my sponge, and I'm going to be a little more picky about where I lay down the Elegant Eggplant because I don't want to completely cover up all the previous colors that we've laid down. Might go more along the edges. And if you find that maybe that perfect plum isn't quite as bright as you want, you can always go back in and lay some more of that color down. It'll just help everything to kind of blend nicely, nicely together. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. That's your start of your background. So once you have that done, you're going to want to move on to the Whisper White Craft Ink. So, and you're also going to want just a big sponge. It's up to you. You can use a sponge dauber, but we're going to use a sponge dauber a little bit later on to do some more detailed work. So I'm going to just load up my Whisper White Crafting sponge here. And I'm going to take that template that we've cut. And I'm going to lay it down so that I can start applying the color. So I'm going to work on this larger circle first. I'm just going to start pushing that color onto my previous inks. And some of these you're going to want to make darker than others because of that blurred effect. Some are darker, some are lighter. So you have the first one laid down there. I should always mention too that um, the darker the background is, the more vibrant the technique will look once you lay your Whisper White Crafting down. 
So next I'm going to maybe use the smaller circle and I'm going to overlap a little bit. Fill up my sponge again. And this one I'm going to make quite intense. So I'm going to really push that color into that template. And once I remove that, you'll see how much brighter that one looks. So maybe now I'll do a medium sized circle over here and I'll take it off the page slightly. Sometimes it might be helpful to adhere um, your working piece of cardstock down with maybe some tape or a little bit of adhesive so that it doesn't move around on you. So there's that one. Maybe we'll lay another bigger one down in here and we'll make this one quite light. You can rub the color around too. It doesn't have to be dabbed on there. Okay. You can see how that's starting to come together. And you're going to find that that Whisper White is going to maybe move around and blend the colors below a little bit. It's going to, it's a messier technique. Don't expect clean fingers at the end of it. Okay, maybe I'm going to take one more just for the sake of showing you and then we're going to move on to the next step. But go ahead and fill as much as you want till you are pleased with the results. So that's the start of the background. So now what we're going to do is I have on my original card, you'll see that there's a few even smaller circles and those are achieved using sponge daubers. So the first thing I'm going to use is the Whisper White. So I'm going to load that up and just in random areas I'm going to push that color in. You want to make this look layered. That's the whole, the whole point of this technique. So we'll just move that color around a little bit. Once you're happy with the Whisper White, I'm going to use the darkest color. It doesn't necessarily have to be the darkest color, but in this instance I'm going to use the Elegant Eggplant and I'm going to take the sponge dauber that corresponds with the Elegant Eggplant and I'm going to load it up and I'm just going to add a few dots of, of it just to add a little bit of interest and contrast. You'll see how neat that looks. You might want to be careful. You might want to, um, after you're done with the Whisper White Craft Ink, kind of hit this with the heat gun just to set up your craft ink because sometimes the Whisper White takes so long to dry that it could transfer to your other ink pads and you don't necessarily want that because it's almost impossible to clean up. So I'll go ahead and I'll just add a couple more here. Maybe one more here. There. See how quick and easy that comes together? It's a really quick technique. So I'm also going to add, just to go further along with the theme of the little dots here, just to add a little bit more variation, I'm going to take a white gel pen. And I'm just going to add a few random circles if I can get my pen to work. This is where you might want to really hit it with the heat gun before. Can't get it to go here. There we go. It just kind of adds another little layer of interest to your background. There you go. See how simple and quick that was? Now you can go ahead and you can add any sentiment that you want in the bottom. Uh, you can add stamp sets, images over top, really, sky's the limit. You've created your own DSP, but in a really, really cool technique. So I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to complete this card. I just wanted to do a quick video just to show you the basic steps of creating the background. If you have any questions or you want to visit my blog, I've got another couple of cards that I've done using this technique that you can take a peek at there. It's www.portswingcreations.com. 
Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.